My name is Davin Sturdivant, and this AIM Learn Fast video is about how to compare your cart braking traces in Race Studio. So I race competition carts, and I'm also a writer for Cart Pulse, which is designed to gather information about the sport of karting and put it into an easy to find place. So when I got in touch with Roger Cadell, who's the national trainer for AIM Sport, we decided to put together some videos about how to use karting data in Race Studio. We've broken them up into these little mini vignettes, hopefully to make it easy to consume. But if you have questions about whatever we cover, just leave a comment below and we'll put it in another video. So I'm going to turn it over to Roger and take it from there. So one of the things that I try to do every time I look at my data is where can I find time under the brakes? Because I know that the brakes and when I'm decelerating is one of those places where I can gain time, but I can also lose a lot of time. <laughs> and so being able to kind of identify, you know, good braking versus bad braking um, really kind of helps me at least identify that I'm braking in the right place and decelerating at the right rate. Mm -hmm. um, do you think we could maybe look at some braking data and just kind of show me how to yeah, do it? Yeah, absolutely. Most carts do not have a, a, a brake pressure sensor. So there's the, so we can't directly measure the amount of braking that a driver is doing. Right. But the result of that is deceleration. So mm -hmm. uh, so what we're going to do is we'll, we'll open up a, a, a karting test. And, uh, and and I always just start with a speed trace. That's kind of my home base for me, right? So, uh, and in order to look at speed or look at look at braking, you, you, you think of a, a of data in three different sides of a of a triangle, right? You've got your acceleration side, you've got your cornering, and you've got your braking. And what I've always found that, that uh, a lot of folks that will concentrate a lot on you know how fast am I at the uh, at, at the highest you know fastest spot on the track and and what about my exit speed getting on the most important corner on the track right mm -hmm. and the, they'll start to study those but yet they don't look at that uh, that other third side of that triangle which is which is the braking piece which you're spending a third of your time doing right so mm -hmm. uh so i i've, I've found a couple of ways that I can help, um, you know, cart racers look at their data. And uh, even if they don't have a pedal position sensor or a brake pressure sensor, there are some ways we can look at it, right, to help you out. So the uh, if, if you just look at the speed traces, right, and, and you just uh, – and, and 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 this is a long braking zone. So so we can start to just look at this guy and 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 look how steep it is, right? And carts they brake so darn fast, right? They they, they decelerate so quickly that uh, even looking at that, you if you really look at this kind of closely, you can see that the you know it's it's pretty steep, and then it looks like it it flattens out a little bit. And it doesn't get quite as steep. So and then and then gets really steep here towards the end. It, hard to see, right? So so the the best way to do that. Is, is is you can't hardly see how steep that one is compared to this one versus this one although this one here look at the look at the end of this one here where where it comes down to about in this area and then it starts what I call hockey hockey sticking mm -hmm. you know it, it comes down and then it starts to, to, to kind of flatten out just a little bit this one here does it a lot as well there's good mm -hmm. reasons for that you know that that's a classic sign of what looks like a trail breaking uh, maneuver with the cart and, mm -hmm. and in carting almost every corner you, you, you're breaking for your you are trail breaking in some manner so mm -hmm. so um, Mm -hmm. So, but when you're really g'd up, that last little bit of your deceleration doesn't show quite so well because you're really turning it into the corner at that point. But, right. So, so that's kind of hard to see, right? So the, the the next step of that to make it even easier to see is to to bring up the longitudinal g forces, and and um, what this is really is is if you're we've got the zero point right here, right? Zero on the scale. And if, if you're in positive numbers, you're accelerating, your shoulder blades are being pushed against the seat. You're, you're, you're accelerating up the track when you're decelerating or, or you know, on the brakes, the number drops below the line, the, the, the data trace drops below zero and is a negative. So this, the standard convention is positive for acceleration, negative numbers for deceleration. So you could you could basically say that long G is the G you feel going front to back. Absolutely, it's definitely in line with the chassis of the cart, right? Uh, lateral G is the other one we might we might bring up the trace here in a moment. That's that's lateral straight across the cart, right? In line with the rear axle, side. side to side laterally. So so uh, and of course they're all tied together. But this graph here only measures the function of in line of the cart, how how quickly you're either accelerating or decelerating. So that same brake tracing, uh, that same speed deceleration area we were looking at a moment ago, we can now look at, you know, right at that point, I'll put the cursor right there. It's, it's right when the driver has transitioned from acceleration, you know, right here, 
from acceleration coming up the hill to deceleration where the, tra the, the trace starts, starts to drop. And that's where it crosses over zero. And now we can look at that trace. We can look at this longitudinal G. And this is a, this is a sensor you don't have to buy. It, it's calculated by your Micron 5 and presented to you. There's no extra, you know, any effort for you to grab this, just turning it on. And you can see here that this driver has, has peaked on its deceleration value at about, uh, you know, if you look over here, minus 0.48 Gs, right? And you can see that all that happened within the first, what is that, 10% of the braking zone? You know, the driver got up to maximum braking. This driver has done a pretty good job of going from, from, from acceleration, flat to the floor, and then transitioning off the throttle and onto the brake pedal and getting to maximum negative Gs within the first little bit of the, of, of the braking zone. Good for, good for him. Then you see this, uh, what you want to see is a, uh, if it's a long braking zone, it'll come down, it'll get to threshold braking, and it'll be a trough across the bottom, a flat bottom ditch, mm. sort so, so to speak. And then it'll go across, and then it'll start coming up where the driver is starting to release the brakes, re, you know, get past the apex of the corner and go back to the throttle. Mm. In this case, you see that there's a little bit of room that, you know, a little bit of work that can be done because the driver got to some, a certain amount of negative Gs, this 0.48, released the braking and got up to about 0.43, and then hit the brakes again a little bit harder, right in the middle of the braking zone, down to about 0.52, where he peaked his deceleration value, mm. and then uh, and then started to release the brakes as he was turning into the corner. So would you maybe think of that as probably when the driver got off the brakes, he might have been going slightly too quick for the corner? And so went back to the brakes again, just marginally. Yeah, in this case, that's pretty small, but but that's exactly what you see sometimes as the driver. You know, let, let's look at the next one, right? It, to, to to give that example a, a better a better look. Here, the driver. I'm going to zoom in just a touch. I like you can use your scroll wheel on your mouse. You can use your up and down arrow keys, but I'm going to zoom in on this one braking zone here just a little bit more. Here, the driver was coming up the straightaway, hits the you know hit, hits the hits the brakes for this left hander, and he hits the brakes and peaks it up there at about 0.33. It's a short little braking zone, you know, transitioning to a left-hander, yeah. so that you're not going to get down to your maximum 0.6 Gs or whatever. But then look, then the driver really released, went from 0.3 back up here to about 0.09, and then hit the brakes again and slow, started slowing the car down, you know, 0.29. This is one of those where, yes, you, the driver got after the brakes, released them quite a bit, and then got back after them again. There could be a hundred reasons why that's happening. You know, is there a transition there? Was there a cart in front of them? We'd want to look at some other laps and some other things. But uh, this is what you really do not want to see unless there's something on that particular corner that makes that happen all the time. Right. Well, and you know, it's funny you bring this up because you know, turn three at SEMA specifically is one of those corners that's visually different than where the line seems to be. And what I mean by that is, you know, it's one of those transition connected mm -hmm. corners, right? It's, it's one corner that immediately goes into another one. So a lot of times on the exit, you're trying to transition over to set up for the next one. So what I always find when I get there is that where it looks like you naturally want to turn in can be early to where the actual late apex is. So you carry a lot more speed to that apex than you plan. Because, you know, instinctively you go, ah, I should turn in right here. And then you turn and the cart gets bound up and you can just feel it and you go, oh, that's, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're carrying, you're carrying too much speed to the corner. So that actually would make some sense. Um, it's, it's one of those corners that I find when I go through that the right way feels horrible but shows on the data fast. And, 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 you, right? and you transitioned into a little bit into the Y again, which I do want to do. So, and, and you talked about transitioning from right hand to left hand, right? So let's bring up another chunk of data to help us understand exactly maybe why the driver was lifting, uh, you know, releasing the brake pedal a touch. So let's bring up our lateral Gs and let's colorize our lateral Gs to a red color just so it's a, a different color here. Our lefts and rights are, are, are now red and our, and our, our fore and aft, our, our longitudinal is blue. So you can see here, that it, the driver at this point right here, when 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 we when we talked about that peak uh, braking area, the driver also is at peak turning. So the uh, the discussion that you just you, you just mentioned about yeah it doesn't feel right or th there is some things about that corner uh, granted certainly, but there uh, in this case the the driver has is turning left negative G's in the lateral sense, which negative turns are, are left-hand turns and positive turns are right-hand turns on the lateral scale. That's the standard convention. And uh, so here though, I'm not seeing a good reason 
um, why this driver would have – he's already G'd up laterally. It's, it's just a little bit of moving around. Okay, that's that could be some bumps. That could be moving around just a little bit. And still getting this 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 drop off of longitudinal Gs, you know, the, the, the slowing rate of the cart. So there's two things that could uh, – I would have a chat with this driver about looking at this data because I, I don't think this is warranted from anything I'm seeing at least. So what I would want them to do is I'd want them to, to, to either not break so soon or, or so push this out a little bit and then not have this big rise here in the middle of his two braking zones. So it gets, it ends up being a little bit of a, a, a flat area. Or is there an actually truly a little acceleration zone in the middle there? I, I'm not seeing it in, in, in the speed trace. So uh, my guess is not, but uh, you know, we, we could study and look at other laps. But uh, since it's already G'd up here and he's at his full 1.5 G's, which is pretty darn close to being the uh, uh, the maximum of the cart, you know, just judge, judge, judging by the, it's about 1.5 G's to the right, 1.5 G's to the left, that uh, this is probably something I would want to study more and, and have a chat, look at video, look at the data, you know, talk with the driver, you know, try to understand why this is happening, right? So. Yeah, yeah, and you can definitely tell, I mean, this is nerd, nerd talk, but you can definitely tell he's on an MG Red, because that's about the peak G for an MG Red, and MG Yellow will be a little bit higher than that, so yeah, you can, you can definitely exactly. see that. So, yeah. so in this particular case, and what's even more impressive than with this driver, what this driver is doing, he's at that 1.5 Gs where, where it's one point, a little bit, you know, 1.6 or something over here, 1.75 there, right? And so not only is the driver getting that 1.58 right here, up here in the corner, but he's also doing it while on the brakes, which means the G sum is even higher yet so the driver is uh is really driving the cart at this at this spot and and maybe it just got a little bit loose you know from from turning in as well because he's he's g'd up both ways right in, in both axes so right. so this might have just been a i had to release or else the thing was going to fly off and, and <laughs> fly off the track that right yeah. uh, another, another little trick <laughs> yeah. that we'll look about yeah. and uh, close this one off just a little bit is sometimes i'll come down here if i'm talking about um um, is there a trend of this happening all the time? I'll, I'll grab this bottom bar. When you're zoomed in, you can grab this bottom bar, slide this over to the middle where, I, where yeah, it's in the middle of my screen, and then I can go down to my test laps toolbar, and if I hover over this bar, I can just drag this to the left or the right and grab another, uh, another lap. Lap 7 was about the same lap time, so I'm going to drag this over there. He's done a similar thing, but not nearly as, as big on lap seven. So let's go mm -hmm. over to lap five. Mm -hmm. Lap five, he hit the brakes, and then this would this would be more textbook, I would think. He's 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 hit his brakes. Mm -hmm. He's he's gone along a little bit, you know, for about you know what is that about? That's a 50 foot uh, grid. So about 20 feet. He's uh, he's at maximum braking. He's at maximum G's. He released the braking a little bit, gave it a little bit more turn, and then took off. This would be more what I would like to see instead of that uh, sawtooth. Mm -hmm. So if, well, let's look at one lap earlier. There, there's even a if if you're if you're not going to have a flat bottom, he G'd it up, and then he was releasing all the while while being you know it's still turning very hard. So. The, the the tool across the bottom by being able just to grab this bar and go and look at different laps after you're zoomed in, even when you're zoomed out, but even more helpful when you're zoomed in is a, is a very handy tool. Okay. And then the last thing that I want to look at, I'm going to turn off lateral G's just to, to make this, so we can focus on this. If a cart, if this particular cart, and if you look at the, the peaks of these four the longer braking zones there, there's there's four that we have you know fairly deep peaks on on the negative g's kind of look at them all right here, here's here's your maximum right this is the deepest one a 0.56 you know this one here about 0.54 so only just a touch touch different there but here's another braking zone and the driver only got up to about 0.41 right so not only do we look at the shape of them but maybe even the first thing we do is look at all of them and say are all these peaks kind of at the same spot, right? And uh, is the driver getting the most out of the brakes all the time? You look at the consistency level, and um, and and SEMA is a great track to for this to work. Some tracks it doesn't work because you're you're breaking in uphill zones, you're breaking down a hill. SEMA being a being quite a flat right. track, that kind of a technique works. If you're breaking yeah. uphill, of course you're gonna you're gonna decel it faster yet. So that doesn't always hold true. But if you're uh, if the braking zones are similar, your cart should stop at about the same. You know, should slow at about the same rate. So that's another mm -hmm. great tool just to look across these and, and check them out. Well, this would be an interesting one, I think, to take a look at too, because uh -huh. this is turn 12. And it's one, it's, you know, it's just before you get to the finish. And because it's one of those long double apex style corners, you have to use the brakes uh -huh. to kind of get the cart turned uh -huh. into the corner. 
but not so much stopped. So it would make some sense why you see some decel because other, you're carrying so much speed coming yeah. off a of 10 and 11, right? That you can't just go flat in there. It's just the cart won't turn. It won't hold that, right? So it, it would be good to, in another test, on another video, you know, compare data together to see if that, uh, that valley mm -hmm. is the same every place. Because in that, you know, th that would let us know, you know, is the driver using too much brake or too little brake, or can the cart hold that lateral with right. as much as he's giving it? Because that'll it'll give and, you. And it's reference. interesting that corner, so. it, it, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to make sure I capture keep both of these in the screen. So, so I just zoomed in just a touch, but that's that corner you were talking about. It was a, a double apex, right? So you, so you get after your brake. So it's not only mm -hmm. the the depth of this valley, uh, the velocity of the braking how, 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 how large this number is that you're looking for but also the shape this one here is more of a braking a braking zone right so it comes down it kind of goes flat across the bottom for a little bit and then right. back up this one here you can see where it is a double apex because he's hit the brakes and then he, he's he's rolling through the middle here he releases the brakes a little bit but he's still not accelerating yet all the way till right here does he thresh cross right. that threshold of negative to positive and, and starts accelerating? But he certainly wasn't braking as much here because he was double apexing. It was tightening up on the on the corner laterally. And if we mm -hmm. we bring up the lateral G's, you know, we can see that it started. You know, there's a lot of braking, a lot a lot of cornering force right here as well. Right, you know, just before he's peaked on his uh, yep. on his uh, on his longitudinal, and then there's a lot of uh, lateral G's as he is releasing and probably getting back to the throttle at that point as well. Interesting stuff. Break, breaking is a uh, is, is the one area that uh, that uh, we should all focus on more. It, there's there's a lot of room for improvement, you know, just by looking at this channel that's included with your Micron Five, this longitudinal G's, and a lot of in in my travels I, I chat with a lot of people, and 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 many folks are not using this hardly at all. So this is a great uh, a great tool. If you look at these these little the, these these valleys, if you were to just in your mind envision that as flipped upside down. That would almost look like a uh, an inverted brake pressure trace, right? You can almost think of it that way. Certainly, there are differences, and and uh, and I would never say that they're exactly the same. But but uh, if you're decelerating this much and you release and went back at it, the, the chances are the driver's foot is releasing the brake pedal a little bit and getting back after it. So you can kind of, if if, if you're having trouble envisioning what this all means, that's kind of what that means. It's almost a almost a, a brake pressure trace upside down. So. That that's a, a, a valuable tool. It, it, the, uh, we'll talk a little bit more in some in some future videos about brakes and and uh, and some even more in depth ways of looking at it. But that's a great way to start to 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 help uh, help your driver get a little bit better using data on the braking side. That's the end of this aim learn fast video. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or if you want us to cover another topic. Visit aimsports.com if you want to learn more about Micron products.